Let's finish out this section, um, which is section 10.2 in your textbook, uh, looking at a couple of applications of graphs. So suppose Adam, Ben, Chris, David, and Eric are training for tasks at work. Adam and Chris are training for task one. Ben, Chris, and Eric are training for task two. David is training for task three. Chris and Eric for task four, and Eric only for task five. Create a graph to model this, and then we'll get to the matching part in a second. So if I want to create a graph to model this, I'm going to use Adam, Ben, Chris, David, and Eric. Adam, Ben, Chris, David, Eric. Those are my people. Now obviously this is going to be a bipartite graph because Adam is not going to learn Ben or Chris or David or Eric. Adam is going to learn a task. So now I have to put my tasks out. So my task one, two, three, four, five. Now all I have to do is draw in the lines that connect the appropriate people to the appropriate tasks. So Adam, Ben, Chris, uh, I'm sorry, Ben, Chris, and Eric, I'm off. Adam and Chris are training for one. So Adam, Chris, training for one. Ben, Chris, and Eric, training for two. So Ben, Chris, Eric, training for two. David is training for three. Chris and Eric are training for four. And Eric is training for five. So if I were just modeling this with a graph, I am done. Now it says determine if a matching is possible. And for matching to be possible, what I'm looking at is can I assign Adam, Ben, Chris, David, and Eric each one tasks so that each task gets done. And obviously I have a well-trained person for each of those. So let's switch up colors. And I would start by looking at the singletons because there's only one person who knows how to do task three. And so David gets task three. And there's only one person who knows how to do task five. And so Eric is going to do task five. So David and Eric are out of it. And now I'm looking at Adam, Ben, and Chris and what would be the best place for them. Well, for task four, the only people who knew how to do it was Chris and Eric. And Eric's already taken, so Chris gets task four. And so now can I assign Adam and Ben? Sure, I could either assign Adam to one and Ben to two, or I could assign Adam to two. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. No, that is the only one. I thought Ben also knew how to do one. So yes, I can do a matching. That is my matching. So Adam would do task one, Ben would do task two, Chris task four, uh, David task three, and Eric task five. So this will resonate with all of my computer people out there. Uh, suppose we have eight devices, computers, printers, etc., that must be connected through a local area network. Um, and I just want to look at some of the ways that this might be done. So one way that it might be done would be with my eight out here. And then like we had talked about before, kind of like our wheel, um, but instead of a wheel, we're not going to connect any directly to one another. We're just going to connect everything to the middle. So that would be one way to set up a network. Um, obviously, this is a great way, but um, if this guy goes down, now we've got real problems, right? We can also set up a ring. And a ring is really just a cycle. And a cycle is just fine, but the problem with this is let's say this guy is a processor. Well, then for this guy down here, it would take a lot longer to get down here as opposed to the star model where each is directly connected. Um, the hybrid model, obviously we all know the connotation of hybrid, but the hybrid model is going to be 
basically the ring and the star. So this one is better because we've got, you know, if something happens to the guy in the middle, we still have other ones that might take longer, but basically it just provides a little bit more strength. So sort of continuing along that train of thought, now I have nine processors. I want to carry out some sort of algorithm, describe the different ways I can arrange the processors and the advantages or disadvantages of each. So obviously I could do a linear array, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a linear array obviously is just everything in a straight line. Now does this work? Of course, but it sucks for these people at the end because if it starts down here, it's going to take a really long time to get down here. Um, a mesh network, um, we'll actually come back to mesh. Let's look next at the complete. So a complete would be just like you think it would. We would have nine points and everyone is going, this is going to be really messy, I'm just giving you the heads up ahead of time. Each one of these points is connected to each other one of these points. Now, is it okay to do it that way? Well, sure, but what's the problem with this method? Well, if you think about every line that I'm drawing being, say, like a fiber optic cable or something like that, then I'm spending just so much money just to have this very robust network. I think I probably missed a few, but you get the point. You wouldn't want to create a network like this because it would be very costly in terms of time and upkeep and everything. So a mesh network is actually a really good way to go, which cuts down on the fact that it's not linear, but we still have a lot of extra connections so we can sort of partition out the work into different processors to get the work done more quickly. So mesh network is a better way to go.